thank you very much uh, uh, again for giving me this uh, opportunity. So I will be talking about, uh, uh, as you said, Dr. Uh, Faisal, integrating a point of ultrasound to the decision making uh, in NICU. So in, in our center in Winnipeg, we have been using point of care ultrasound since 2016. And now it became a, like standard of care. So uh, um, we are now relying uh, uh, on lung ultrasound for management of lung diseases and uh, like uh, more than x-rays or integration of x-rays sometimes. And we are relying on the style ultrasound as I will mention uh, and during the presentation on the diagnosis of gut injury. And uh, we have other protocols that I will discuss in uh, some details. So uh, let's start. So I have nothing to disclose in this presentation. And I'm presenting uh, on behalf of my colleagues in the unit. So we are uh, a group of physicians, experts in uh, point of care ultrasound. And also all of our fellows, they are trained in uh, applying point of care ultrasound uh, techniques and applications on daily basis. So I have three main objectives in this presentation. First, I will speak about the spectrum of point of care ultrasound in the clinical uh, neonatal practice. Then the different classes and different applications of point of care ultrasound with the relevant, uh, some cases, uh, some case scenarios and the, the related evidence. And then practical steps of implementing neonatal uh, POCUS program in your institution. So what's POCUS, point of care ultrasound? It's goal-directed and problem-oriented. Uh, it, it should answer a specific question. So uh, you are applying a point of care ultrasound for a specific organ to answer a specific question. And it should be performed by a clinician. That's very important because it should be interpreted in the clinical context, not by a technician or someone not aware about the clinical details. Interpreted in the clinical context, ready and re reducible and short in duration should not exceed 5-10 uh, minutes. For example, lung ultrasound should not exceed 5 minutes in practice. So applications of point of care ultrasound can be divided into two main categories. The diagnostic category and the procedural uh, category. Diagnostic, it includes a cranial ultrasound and the cranial ultrasound should be differentiated from the cranial ultrasound, uh, routine cranial ultrasound performed by the radiologist for routine assessment of uh, IVH in premature infants. I'm talking about uh, emergency. So you have infant, for example, deteriorated overnight uh, with uh, unexplained anemia, you can get the ultrasound machine and not wait until the daytime and assess for significant intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, cardiac focus, which should be differentiated for detailed uh, hemodynamics assessment or TNECO. Cardiac focus, it's just a quick assessment for emergency situation infant who is deteriorating or crashing for pericardial effusion or um, uh, any other reason for deterioration. Hemodynamics assessment should be done by a, a trained person in hemodynamics. Intestinal ultrasound, which is our uh, modality of choice, and that will explain why in our unit for assessment of gut injury or neck. Lung assessment, uh, in integration of X-ray or sometimes in isolation, and also I will explain that airway assessment for vocal cord weakness, the diaphragmatic paralysis align position. So uh, we have in our uh, center vascular access team trained the nurses in insertion of uh, 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 vascular access or pick lines guided by ultrasound, only dedicated for that. So uh, procedural ultrasound, as I mentioned, vascular access can be considered lumbar puncture, suprapubic uh, tapping, uh, and also thracosynthesis or pericardiosynthesis guided by ultrasound. So I'll give you an example now for the crashing infant, just to, uh, like, it's a, like a kind of uh, uh, holistic protocol or uh, uh, multi-organ assessment in an infant who is crashing. I, I am holding in my hand now, like uh, that could be the future uh, used stethoscope, ultrasound in your hand or your pocket. You can use it at any time to assess lung, to assess abdomen or brain. And um, this ultrasound machine can give you like a, a, like a good idea about 2D and the color doubler, but you, can, you cannot get a lot of details uh, compared to the, uh, the big routinely used ultrasound machines. So let us go by step by step. We have infant who is crashed and you don't know why, or infant not, is not responding to resuscitation. It could be acute hypoxemia, shock, 
poor perfusion or, un or unexplained acute anemia. So let's start step by step as per uh, NRP guidelines. Be sure that there's ET tube in, in place, line in position, and uh, the infant still not responding to resuscitation as per NRP steps. Uh, you can assess instead of waiting for someone to come and do X-ray, that might take maybe 15 minutes, ultrasound. If it is available, you can do that uh, right away in the unit and you can get an idea if there's lung consolidation or collapse, you need to apply more mean air pressure or to give early, early surfactant. And uh, if the answer is no, and it could be pneumothorax, and then you may need to tab the pneumothorax instead of just uh, uh, relying on uh, stethoscope or um, uh, stick a needle in, just, uh, in the chest without uh, impression or be sure that there is a pneumothorax or not. Or you may get impression about lung collapse or uh, lung compression by effusion or undiagnosed congenital diaphragmatic hernia. We have seen that undiagnosed antenatal, un antenatally undiagnosed congenital diaphragmatic hernia. And it uh, was really diagnosed uh, immediately in the LND by ultrasound. So you may consider the appropriate management for congenital diaphragmatic hernia or uh, drain the effusion by needle as necessarily. But, uh, or it could be related to heart. So it could be empty heart, so you need to give fluids instead of giving empirical fluids. You, you may give fluids guided by uh, assessment of uh, end systolic uh, filling of the heart by echo or cardiac focus. Or it could be poor contractions. The heart is not contracting well, then you may need to, uh, to start uh, infusion like epinephrine. Or it could be cardiac tamponade due to pericardial effusion, then you may need to drain that. And uh, uh, all of these, uh, 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 like underlying pathophysiologic issues, will not be uh, detected even by x ray easily. On the ultrasound, in just a few minutes, you can detect all the underlying pathology and you can deal with it in uh, right away. Or it could be severe pulmonary hypertension, then you may need to start nitric oxide early. And then if there is severe uh, uh, anemia or severe pallor, you may need to give uh, uh, emergency blood and you may need to assess for the um, internal bleeding. Is it cranial bleeding or intra-abdominal bleeding? And we have seen that like a splenic rupture uh, or subcapsular hepatic uh, uh, hemorrhage. And that was diagnosed immediately by ultrasound after birth. So I'll give you a case scenario now uh, for applying of lung ultrasound. So we'll start with the infant 33 weeks on CBAB of 7, FIO2, uh, close to uh, 0.3 or 0.28, and it's increasing. And you assess by lung ultrasound. And uh, if you are familiar with the lung ultrasound, there is air bronchogram can be seen, almost white outline. So I will give the highest score. So a score for uh, uh, the lung for three, which is the highest for each left and right lung. And for lung ultrasound, you need to assess a pattern. Is it RDS pattern or TTN pattern, the homogeneity, which is lung expected to be homogeneous in, in case of RDS, for example, you can score the lung. So the higher the score, you consider the intervention. For example, it has been validated that score higher than eight is consistent with RDS and you may consider early surfactant. Uh, no pneumothorax or effusion. You can rule that out easily. Evidence of forcing hypoxemia. You need to correlate the lung ultrasound with clinical situation or worsening hypoxemia. If the infant is chronic, you may need to rely on histograms. The ratio between uh, arterial saturation and FIA2, mini or pressure, try to get as much as you can clinical values and integrate that with uh, the ultrasound. And this is a protocol that we are using in our unit for uh, surfactant administration in premature infants. If the infant with RDS after birth or in CBAB of seven and the FI2 is increasing more than 25%, Lung ultrasound consistent with RDS and score more than eight will not wait a long time or just give surfactant early. If the infant is premature because that's consistent with the randomized control trial, less than 34 weeks and less than six hours of age, this is exactly the gestational age and uh, uh, early in life as consistent with the trial. If the answer is yes, give uh, surfactant by mist if the infant is less than 32 weeks or by insure beyond 32 weeks. If the answer is no, Consider surfactant, uh, surfactant as an individualized decision. So if the infant is uh, like close to term or term infant, that's up to you. You can give more time or you can consider early surfactant because there is no clear answer from the evidence. 
for uh, late term or term infant, late preterm or term infant. So if the, in, in the chronic cases, if we have infant on preterm, infant on CPAP. So daily in our unit, we uh, we trained our RTs. So most of our RTs, they are doing the lung ultrasound. They are not relying only on physicians. So I've been teaching them for the last two years and they are available. So we have coverage 24 seven uh, for lung ultrasound. So if the infant is preterm on CPAP and uh, if the infant is unstable, like failure weaning of CPAP, worsening high oxygen indices, or um, worsening histograms, worsening oxygen saturation, or worsening blood gases, we categorize according to the lung ultrasound score. If the score is low, then it could be other reason for deterioration not related to uh, 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 collapsed lung. It could be uh, the infant might need caffeine or other intervention. If the lung ultrasound score is uh, midway between six to 10, you may maintain the same CBAB and reassess later. Uh, and if the, if the infant is deteriorating more, you may increase CBAB. If the lung ultrasound score on more than 10, definitely you need to escalate CBAB and reassess again. So the, the, this protocol is available and the, our RTs, they are evaluating on daily basis. And this has been very successful for the last uh, uh, two years. And we are validating that and, and as under review for publication. And also the uh, respiratory failure could be due to the phragmatic paralysis. So in this situation here, it's very easy. You can uh, evaluate that by ultrasound. So we're evaluating the right uh, diaphragm by M mode, and you can see the M mode is flat line. There is no any movement of the diaphragm on the right side compared to the left side, which is moving or wavy line. So you can see the diaphragm is moving up and down, nicely detected by M mode. You can also assess uh, the infant on strider. So in the, this uh, modality here, it's uh, you can apply the uh, this high frequency linear probe to the larynx, and you can see incredible details. You can see the thyroid cartilage. You can see the vocal cords nicely, and the, if the vocal cords moving or not can be undetected reason for CBAP dependence. And we are evaluating that in uh, uh, currently in a very um, a kind of interesting study because it's the first experience that has not been published uh, before. So I'm gonna show you an example now of this infant with bilateral weakness of the vocal cords. The infant is trying to cry, but the vocal cords does not really separate, does not really move well. And this infant stuck on CBAP, uh, like uh, close to the corrected edge of turn. And uh, there was no other reason. Uh, the lung was not very bad. So the, sometimes uh, the weakness of vocal cords might be undiagnosed or undetected reason for uh, CBAP dependence or feeding intolerance sometimes. So uh, evaluation of the AT tube position. So they have the AT tube here and they have the aortic arch and it's easy, very easy to measure the distance between the tip of the AT tube to the aortic arch, which is almost um, at the level of the carina. You cannot see the carina, but you can see the arch which is, which is arching above the carina. In this situation, it is 1.5 centimeter which is acceptable. So one centimeter is acceptable in preterm, up to one kilogram. Uh, one to two centimeters, between one to two kilograms, two centimeters in babies more than two kilograms. Uh, lung ultrasound score to evaluate oxygenation and surfactant need in neonates treated with the, uh, CPAP has been validated in multiple studies and meta-analysis as well. And we also validated the lung ultrasound severity score in prediction of chronic lung disease and has been published recently as meta-analysis. So typically, if you have high score, and we uh, did this also study in collaboration with our Greece and Mount Sinai Hospital uh, in Toronto. And uh, after that, there was a meta-analysis, including eight studies. And you have really high score, more than 10. It is almost more than 90% predictable of chronic lung disease and that you can be predictable as early as the second week of life. Ultrasound is a preferred modality in diagnosis of pneumonia based on the meta-analysis. And this meta-analysis, they are recommending that uh, pediatricians, e even hospital pediatricians can be trained in diagnosing lung, uh, by lung ultrasound pneumonia, and they can differentiate that uh, pneumonia from uh, bronchiolitis or other pathologies. Uh, ultrasound can be done in prone position. You don't have to uh, turn the baby over from uh, uh, so bind uh, to prone position or the opposite, you can just leave the baby in the same position without disturbing him. And the ultrasound, as I mentioned, takes about three to five minutes for assessment. 
And lung ultrasound can predict histologically changes. We validated the lung ultrasound histology in Biglet models in our animal lab. And it was really highly predictive to histologic lung injury, induced lung injury in animal model. Now we'll speak about INSA ultrasound in some details, because it's uh, like our uh, preferred modality uh, for diagnosis of gut injury. So I'll give you two case scenarios just to like uh, give you an idea about the difference between relying on lung ultrasound, sorry, in cell ultrasound and the X-ray. So we have a preterm infant, 30 week or two weeks old, uh, and uh, passed multiple frank blood per rectum. CRB was six twice, unremarkable CBC, and uh, uh, unremarkable blood gases. And the X-ray, as you can see here, has been uh, it has been reported as a nematosis by radiologist and also interpreted by my colleague as nematosis. It's really difficult to rule out a neck in this case. And we did the ultrasound, it was very reassuring. So I did the ultrasound in multiple, uh, multiple regions. So typically we are evaluating four quadrants and very umbilical area. So the main concern was, uh, was around the left side. It's uh, like uh, this model here, if I would like to teach how the ultrasound, normal ultrasound looks like, in units, I will use this image to teach the normal ultrasound. So normal perfusion, uh, normal hypoechoic looking bowel with good bristalsis. If there's nematosis, you should not be good, you should not see good bristalsis or good perfusion around. So in this case, uh, we started feeding the baby. And I have to mention that 55% of the X-rays for the last five years in our unit reported with nematosis, the ultrasound was normal and started feeding them. And we have no single case of uh, decompensation or deterioration. And I have to mention that ultrasound is different, like the, our model is different from relying on radiologists or radi uh, technicians because it should be integrated, it should be interpreted by the clinician. So I'm talking about ultrasound performed by the neonatologist who can correlate the ultrasound with the clinical situation, clinical examination, and other markers. Another case scenario is totally opposite. Uh, in, in, in the outcome. So preterm infant, 26 weeker, hemodiacally stable. At two weeks of age, developed a bencytopenia and the high CRP, as high as 160, 196 and rising, no lactic acidosis. If you look at the X-ray here, there is no any definite sign. One of the limitations of the X-ray, you only rely on nematosis. Or if there is portal venous gas, which is really difficult to detect by X-ray, this is easier to detect by ultrasound, or perforation, which is really late. Although the X-ray does not look normal, but there is no definite uh, marker of, uh, of neck. The ultrasound is showing severe neck. So we have a very echogenic bowel. To just compare this image to the previous one, you have a fluid collection, septated fluid here. And when we apply it, color doubler, the, like the, the significant ischemia, uh, global ischemia of the bowel. So in the ultrasound, you are not only relying on nematosis. And if you see only nematosis by ultrasound, it's most probably artifacts. Because you should see, they have nine markers, you should see at least three markers all together to be able to diagnose uh, neck. Uh, if you see only air, it means like it, most probably it is artifacts. Outcome, uh, operated two weeks later with uh, detected bowel and patchy ischemia during OR. Uh, mural gas or nematosis can be detected easily by ultrasound, but again, even if there is no nematosis, there's another, uh, like other uh, eight markers that you can detect by ultrasound. And if you see only a suspicion of uh, uh, air uh, and there is, the perfusion is good, good bristels is good, the uh, uh, hypoechoic bowel, that's most probably uh, artifacts. And it could be uh, massive nematosis as in, in this images or could be mild. So part of this colon here with the normal bowel wall and the rest of the uh, wall is bubbly. And it could be artifacts like in this image here. When I apply pressure, the air moves away and you have nice hypoechoic bowel. So sometimes if I have uh, even false impression of nematosis, I just stay some time and repeat the ultrasound, the air should move away. Uh, so in our uh, unit, before we implemented the ultrasound, we were actually higher than average in, in, uh, uh, in the country in the rate of neck. So in, in, at St. Boniface Hospital, we uh, were as high as 
actually uh, more than 20% higher than the national average. And after we implemented the ultrasound 2017, we now less than the national average in, in a rate of neck. And uh, in the other hospital, uh, one's hospital, we were a little bit higher than the national average. We are now much lower than the national average. So even our um, radiologists, they are really convinced that we should rely more on ultrasound. So this X-ray report, which we reported as uh, uh, translucence is concerned of nematosis, uh, reported by pediatric radiologist. And he recommended that best visualized within mid and distal descending colon as multiple tiny translucences. He did not mention neck, he did not mention nematosis. Concerning of intramural gas, this would be best confirmed by point of care ultrasound. So he did not recommend the ultrasound by his team, he recommended ultrasound by clinician. So after we presented uh, all of these X-rays and all of these ultrasound to the radiology team, they said that that's really, uh, really misleading to keep relying on X-rays only. A portal venous gas, uh, you, if you can see here, very easy to detect in massive a portal venous gas in the liver. You can see the bubbles uh, moving in the liver in massive and moderate compared to mild. In uh, X-rays, you can detect only massive portal venous gas. Moderate and mild might be missed or most probably missed by X-ray. Grading of ischemia, again, we are not relying only on nematosis, but we are relying mainly on ischemia and thickening of the bowel. So you have normal thickening and normal perfusion, that's normal. If you have thickened uh, bowel with hyperemia, that's early sign. If you have thickened uh, bowel with ischemia, Bosti of uh, color Doppler, that's another later sign. If you have thinning, that's more common in chronic cases, severe cases. If you have um, no color Doppler at all with thinning, that could be uh, necrotic bowel, dead bowel. So we compared the, the X-ray versus ultrasound in clinical outcomes. This article is under review for publication. So the X-ray could not differentiate mild, moderate, and normal cases because a lot of normal cases reported as nematosis, only in severe cases associated with perforation. But in ultrasound, it's much easier to detect normal or uh, differentiate normal, mild, moderate, and severe cases. <clears throat> we published our uh, guidelines in this article if you'd like to read more about instant ultrasound in more details. And now I will move to cranial uh, imaging. So post-hemorrhagic ventricular dilatation, we uh, have our neurocritical team which can assess cases with post-hemorrhagic ventricular dilatation and to communicate with the neurosurgery. So we have our protocol to uh, uh, intervene with hydrocephalus in severe hydrocephalus more than 97 um, uh, centile plus four millimeter above the gestational age. We need to confirm that by MRI. And if there's communicating uh, uh, hydrocephalus, either by MRI or spinal ultrasound, then we'll consider lumbar punctures for three times. And if the infant improved, then we'll not proceed for uh, Umay reservoir. And then if there is obstruction or the infant required more than three lumbar punctures, then we'll proceed for reservoir. If the infant is more than two kilograms, and then we'll consider uh, VB shunt instead. So there's a picture of my reservoir that we are using in our uh, unit. We also may consider spine, a spinal ultrasound. And uh, you can detect incredible anatomy by spinal ultrasound. So you can see here the uh, spinous process. You can see the dura. And the conus medullaris, you can see the CSF, which is a black collection here. And you can see the coda uh, equina as uh, floating filaments pulsating, which are easily to roll out a uh, T3 cord. And you can see the uh, vertebral bodies. And you can differentiate easily between a low CSF, not suitable for a attempt of lumbar puncture. As you can, there is no any CSF can be detected here compared to adequate CSF, and you can easily uh, apply the needle and you can mark the area of the most uh, significant collection. So training design for uh, point of care ultrasound. Uh, training course with uh, uh, exam. We are providing in our focus new uh, website some training courses with the exam and th that can be done online. But workshop should be done in person, should be done physically because you need to, to get some training on the machine or simulator. You need to practice under supervision at least 20 to 25 studies. Now I'm talking about ultrasound, not teen echo or not hemodynamics, which should be a one year of fellowship training. I'm talking about training on lung ultrasound, 
or internal ultrasound or upper way ultrasound. So practice under supervision to 20 to 25 studies, mixed variety, and uh, pathologists would be more than half of the cases. If you are able to do another 50 studies under supervision, then you might or like you might uh, continue your, your practice as instructor. You can participate in the workshop. And you may consider gradual implementation of your institution. At the end, you may have or integrate the point of care ultrasound to your fellowship curriculum, as we have in our unit, and we are actually beyond that. We have one year dedicated fellowship for point of care ultrasound. So to conclude, you have two options. Either option number one, to continue relying on limited clinical assessment or only x-rays and empirical decisions, or you may stay as you are, uh, uh, like with this option, as your comfort zone, or you may need to, uh, like to get new experience to uh, um, uh, get uh, uh, training on ultrasound, point of care ultrasound, and uh, adopt the pathophysiologic based approach with individualized medical recommendation and get a new skills and start a new life. And thank you very much.